Hey y'all, welcome to Poly Side Eye. We are back again, like we said we were. This is nighttime. This is our first nighttime episode. Enjoy the view. And I enjoy Jared with no shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're doing a, a nighttime show, like I gotta be high am when I'm in my house. And, uh... <laughs> it is Black History Month and it is starting out pretty wild. To say the like, least. Yeah. So this episode is going to be a little bit more pop culture driven. And I got to tell you, like, after this whole Whoopi Goldberg controversy, I'm scrolling through Twitter. It basically looks like a critical race theory lesson. Like, everyone is just saying what they feel, the, the thoughts on race, ethnicity, the Holocaust and all this. So this all started from an episode of The View. I don't even watch The View anymore because it got a little bit too... A little bit too political for me. And I think this happened around when Barack was president or maybe leaving office. I'm not sure. I feel like they took a real hard turn, like, leading up to the last president. <laughs> yeah, that, that orange mofo. So they had a conversation. I'm not sure even, did you see the episode at all? Or you just saw the clip? Yeah, I mean, I don't watch the show either. I, ju I just saw whatever they, what's been circulating in the, on Al Gore's internet. <laughs> so Whoopi made the comments about the Holocaust not being about race. It was about... Um, like man hating man or something like that. Well, first she said that this was something between two groups of white people. And that was the first like historically inaccurate statement she made. But then she kind of, when people pushed back and said, well, at the time, Jewish people weren't considered white she kind of deflected and was like, this isn't about race. We don't want to go down that path. This is about man against man or something stupid like that. Well, let's play the clip. It's, it's not about race. It's not about race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. But it's about white supremacy. It's well, about, well it's, not, it's not about and, and race. It's it's that, that, but, but these are two white months. groups of people. Well, How do they have to write it? Then let's be truthful about it. So two things I noticed from that clip. The gas in the audience. That <laughs> <laughs> they knew there was some bullshit. Or... I'm not even sure if they still have audience members, but somebody gasped, maybe the cameraman, production, for good reason. And then I think it was the way Whoopi delivered it too. She said it so matter of factly, like not even to where it can be contested. And Whoopi has put her foot in her mouth before in, in regards to black people as well. Like we were mad at her too, uh, our community. So now mad. what happened? <laughs> I said, y'all were mad at her. Don't oh, <laughs> yeah, but we'll we be saying some shit sometimes. So this isn't new. After she said that, of course, you know, Twitter blew up. She got the little backlash. She uh, issued an apology. She also apologized again the next day on The View. Then after that, we hear that ABC suspended her for two weeks. I don't necessarily agree with this. So let's just start from the beginning. So my question to you is, well, first and foremost, please let them know your background, just to know we were talking about this issue that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so I'm getting my PhD in political science, almost done, yay. But my research interests focus on thinking about or theorizing about the concept of race as a political, social um, construction in how I, we've talked about it in the show before, like race isn't a biological concept, um, but it does have very real consequences. Um, and so I'm always trying to think about how race operates, particularly in the US context. And one thing we should talk about is how race is spatially contingent. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't operate the same everywhere. And so I think that's something we need to be cognizant of. And not only that, but you know a lot about history as well. I think you know a lot about world history too, right? <laughs> I mean, you kind of, you should as a political scientist, you should have some idea. I can't speak for everyone, but I think a good political scientist would be pretty well aware of what's going on outside of the U.S., yes. Right. My disclaimer is just, he knows his shit, y'all. So <laughs> I'm wondering, and this is just, you know, we're, we're marrying pop culture with politics and all that shit. Anywho, was it wrong for her to say? Like, what was wrong about her statement? Well, for starters, 
Whoopi is speaking about race from an Ameri- from a U.S. context. And as I kind of already said, race is a construction, but the way that it's constructed depends on what era you're talking about, where you're talking about. There's all these other considerations um, that render her statement wrong, but we have to really like tease apart what was wrong about it. So the first contention is what she says it's not about race. Like that's just absolutely false um in fact we've talked about this before the way that the that hitler and the nazis legitimized this project was through the idea that jewish people were uh an inferior race and in fact they rely very heavily upon what was called race science or eugenics um in the early 20th century to justify that project and much of that science and i'm doing air quotes because it's not scientific it's it's a social political issue but they relied largely on the race science that was predominant in the united states that was also used as a way to legitimate the jim crow project so the drug history synopsis of that is hitler was like well damn like america came up with this concept to essentially oppress um, justify oppressing millions of people, we might try something like that. So they, in effect, adopted the notion of racialization that was employed in the U.S. Now, the reason that that's important is because after the Holocaust and after the end of World War II, the United Nations, newly formed, issued like all of these sweeping statements condemning the concept of race. And they explicitly say in these statements that part of this impetus behind that is largely what happened with the Holocaust and painting Jewish people as being an inferior race. So there was all of these institutions, both in the U.S. and globally, that condemned everything under the the auspices of this was a race project. And race, at the time, many places were moving to even ban the concept of race. So for instance, for example, France doesn't allow race data to be taken in most institutions because their idea is that the concept itself is so rife with um, oppression and kind of is really deep seated hatred towards people that the, that they just wanted to do get rid of the concept altogether. Um, so that's just one example to show how the concept of race in thinking about the Holocaust, they're, they're kind of inextricable, like you can't, tease them apart. So she was wrong in that dimension. And then when she says that this is about white people against white people or white groups against white groups, that's also not really historically right. Because as I just said, Jewish people weren't identified as being a part of the so-called white race. And so, you know, that is also not correct. Now, people will then say, well, aren't Jewish people white now? And that's complicated too, because, you know, you have to think about the different, all the, the places that Jewish people live in the political environments in which they find themselves. So Jewish people in the United States are going to have a much different experience than Jewish people elsewhere because of the history of, of how white as a, as a concept developed. And in the U.S., it wasn't always the case that Jewish people were white, but largely kind of in not necessarily in direct response but in some ways related to what happened with the holocaust what you see is that as the 20th century progresses more and more jewish people come to become white uh, i'm doing air quotes because it's all this shit is ridiculous but they become white as time progresses and so that's the sh- kind of the longer history to kind of put some context around why Whoopi's statement was factually inaccurate is the main idea here that race is a social construct and that's why we're all just confused by it? Well, I mean, that's part of it, but I don't even like to just say race is a social construct because that doesn't really tell us anything. It's such a truism, what we call it. It's such an obvious statement that, or it should be an obvious statement that just saying that doesn't tell us anything. For like, so in my class, I told my students, like, money is a social construct. Like, it's a piece of paper, but because of um, historical reasons, because of political reasons, because of social reasons, we assign some meaning to it um, and use that construction to do things with it. And I like to think of race as kind of operating in a similar context. Like, the meaning of race is going to be, once again, historically, socially, politically contingent. And so the meaning that it has in certain contexts is going to vary um, relative to others. And so I just think that there's a way that just saying that it's a social construct kind of misses the point, which is that 
part of it is you can't make sense of it because that's the point. <laughs> the point is it that it's not science. And because it's not science, it's not going to be systematic in the way that we want to neatly try to like make sense of this. Like it's going to change. It's going to ebb and flow largely in response to political conditions. And so I just think that there's a way that the the discourse is is kind of lacking in, in, in nuance, but Twitter isn't exactly the space for that. <laughs> So. Right. And I got to say, I was confused myself because with the whole, you know, white people versus other white people, like someone brought up Muslim, like Muslim isn't a race, like it's a religion, like I can convert to be Muslim, I can convert to be Jewish. Like, what about a black Jewish person? Like, where do they fall along that? Now, that's an interesting question. Where do they fall? I think what people mean by that is like, how are they perceived? And like, what are the ramifications of their both their racial status and maybe their religious status. And my answer to that would be like, it depends. It depends where they are. It depends on um, not only where they are, but what the customs and the, the general understandings of race in that context are. And so if they're in the United States, it might mean something entirely different if they're, than if they're a Black Jewish person living in, I don't know, in the UK, or if they're living in Australia, or if they're living in China. Like, my point being is you can't paint this whole idea of race in, in without taking into account like all of the different histories and contextual meaning. And so these questions are not easy to answer, especially in a setting where you expect it to do it in how many characters can you use on Twitter? Like 180, 70, what is it? They, they, they've increased it. Oh, okay. Well, however many characters, it ain't enough to like go through and explain what the, this is. And then if you really want to get into the weeds about this, you have to also consider how power works. And so everyone doesn't equally get to decide how race operates. There are people in powerful positions who, because they are much closer to the levers of power, can employ the idea of race in ways that benefit them. And so we need to be cognizant of that too. Like, obviously, we all contribute to the making of race largely through rituals and common sense ideas, but ultimately the origins of the concept were created for largely malicious reasons. And we didn't really, we being people who don't have those levers of power, didn't necessarily get to have our input on equal terms. And I think that's something also to think about. So my question goes back to Whoopi now. Was she right about anything that she said? Were her speaking on that in terms of just being in America? be right no it's still, it's still wrong um but i will say her being in america gives you some clues as to why she's so wrong and part of that is because the way that most americans think about race for obvious reasons that's where they live that's where what they understand to be normal that's the, that's their setting and so they're going to think about the way they understand race and assume that it's similar everywhere i mean part of what America does is everything that we do here is like, it obviously has to be done the same way elsewhere. And that's kind of what hegemony is. So I think it's hard for Americans to get out of that. I think they tend to think that race is this universal kind of uh, concept that doesn't take into account like geography or time or space mm -hmm. or any of that. What I think was just so unfortunate was she just spoke about it so confidently, like so like cavalier to the way it's like, oh, it's not about race. It's not about race. That's what and, she does, though. And for me, it's like, I don't want someone telling me about slavery. I'm not going to tell somebody about, you know, their trauma that goes back in history, especially if I don't have, like, the knowledge on it. That's an entirely different conversation because people are like, well, she shouldn't have spoke about things that she didn't know. I'm like, well, she thought she knew. And like, that was kind of the issue is that she thought she knew. But then the question then should be, why did she think she knew? Um, and largely that's because we don't have a, generally, I'm being charitable and I'm going to say I'm included in this, we generally have a very poor understanding of what race is. Most of us think it's genetic or it's biological. Um, and so that's already a shit show. And then even the people who think it, call it a social construct, like they don't interrogate like what that means. They think it's just a name. Like they don't interrogate the history, the politics the economy of race, all of these other concepts, because, I mean, where are you going to, where would you even think to 
inquire about these things. We don't learn it in school. Like, unless you go to you to college, you might self-select into taking the class, but more times than not, you're not going to take a, a class that focuses or theorizes about race. So for you, there's nothing critical about this. That's just the way that it is. And that's how race is supposed to operate. Like the whole idea of it is it's supposed to feel natural because that's what gives it legitimacy. And so if you don't have the space to question it, <laughs> of course what she said she thought was right. And of course after this, you know, Fox News had a fucking field day with this. And you know, you know, Megan McCain, her ass, you know, was rolling around in her spot <laughs> in the mud, just clapping her hooves, like how happy she was. That Whoopi was under fire. Did you say clapping her hooves? I'm sorry. Yeah, I hate that porkish bitch so much. But it was just the audacity of her, of all people, to comment on this. Because Meghan McCain has said so much dumb shit. So my next question is, do you agree that Whoopi got suspended? Like, I just think it was ridiculous. No. I mean, I'll, be, I'm, I'll be frank. It was stupid. The decision was stupid. The conversation around it was stupid. The people saying that this is the right thing to do is stupid. It's just stupid in a number of dimensions. So part of the reason it's stupid is because what does that accomplish? Like, first off, the people were like, oh, well, Whoopi harmed the Jewish community. Okay, like, who, get, who gets to decide that? Like, I saw a few statements from Jewish groups. Like, what does suspending her do? Like, what is that performing? Um, and then people will say, oh, well, she needs to be held accountable. And I'm like, accountable to whom? What is the accountability mechanism? <laughs> it, like, the statement has already been made. She can't retract it. It's already out into the ether. So everybody is going to hear it, whether or not she's on the air now or not. So I'm just like, what is it doing? And then I, I heard that she, uh, they had like a segment the next episode to kind of have like a teachable moment and she apologized again and, and all of that. But obviously that wasn't sufficient. So, you know, ABC executives took it upon themselves to just make themselves seem morally superior, which is really what it is. Like this has absolutely nothing to do with, Ju with Jewish people. It has nothing to do with Whoopi Goldberg's statement. What this is about is advertising. ABC, right, ABC executives being a part of this corporate machine that they are part of knew that doing something could have potentially, like you said, saved them some money, potentially some advertising dollars and blah, blah, blah. Like this has nothing to do with harm caused against people. It has nothing to do with trauma. It has nothing to do with doing the right thing. It's all ridiculous. And the reason it's also politically stupid is because now Fox News will get to pair it for the next however many weeks that, you know, ABC is this totalitarian network that wants to silence voices and wants to essentially take away your free speech. And The View is all, all these democratic women on The View. And so this is obviously a project of the left, the evil left, that just wants to censor and shut everybody up. Then that's going to get played around in this echo chamber for the next however long. And then they get to come on top as like the arbiters of free speech and like freedom. And it's, it's so predictable. And people who consider themselves liberal fall right into, into the trap. They just fall right into the trap. Mm -hmm. So they just give this giveaway to the right. And it's so stupid. It's just so stupid. I wouldn't be mad if Whoopi just said, deuces, fuck y'all, I'm out. I hope he does. Like, she literally does The View as a hobby, in my opinion. And I think they need Whoopi. Like, who are they going to replace her with? And you, you get rid of the Black person on Black History Month. Like the <laughs> and I think all of them put their foot in their mouths at some point. Right. We've seen it with Joy. We've seen it with uh, Kelly Osbourne. Oh, yeah, Ke Kelly Osbourne. Even Raven said a few crazy things. Raven, like Elizabeth, like, crying tears because she can't say the N-word. I don't know. I haven't been watching The View in a long time anyway, so it's hard for me to just protest it now. But I hope people are protesting watching it because I just think it's ridiculous that they would suspend her over that. Like, she already apologized twice. I'm not sure what else people want from that. But again, I don't even think it's about what people want. So people will say, I've seen some people say, oh, well, if this is what the Jewish community decides, 
I'm like, how do y'all know that? Was there a plebiscite between Monday and now to like, or whenever the, it happened to get a poll, the general, the entire Jewish population in the United States to determine whether or not they felt harmed by Whoopi's comments? I'm sure that didn't happen. So who gets to decide what's harmful and what's not? So it's just, it's a slippery slope. And I really wish people would be a little bit more discerning when it comes to thinking about what these corporate entities are doing because it has absolutely nothing to do with so-called doing the right thing. It has nothing to do with protecting Jewish people. It's all about ABC to further their own um, economic aims, to cover their ass, to make themselves seem like the arbiters of justice, inequality, and everything else. Meanwhile, they stab all of us in the back by raising their prices on everything, by essentially holding things hostage whenever there's like these deals for cable packages and raising your prices and everything else. So they get away with all of that shit because we get so focused on the stupid comment. And it's, it's just the whole thing is just stupid. I have no other way to describe it, honestly. You better tell it like it is Bernie Sanders. <laughs> It definitely sparked a lot of dialogue. Was there anything outlandish that you read on Twitter today regarding the Whoopi situation or anything that just stood out to you? Uh, I think one argument that I saw made, I think was kind of leading us in the wrong direction. So Whoopi gets suspended for making these comments, but Meghan McCain can say whatever she wants and nothing happens. I mean, the takeaway from that would have been, if Meghan McCain would have been suspended this potentially would have been would have been okay as long as like the suspensions were dealt evenly or consistently I should say and that kind of misses the point which is that why are we so okay with submitting ourselves to our employers like that like that should be a bigger question um and then I was like well Whoopi is certainly being censored by her employer and people will say, well, she's not being censored. Like, she can say what she wants. She just can't say it in the air. I'm like, okay, that's still censorship. And what you're saying is that she can then essentially relinquish her freedom to say certain things while she's on the clock, i.e. while she's under control of her boss. And I want people to wonder, like, why would she be okay with that? Why are we okay submitting ourselves to our employers to this tyranny, which is really what it is? We should all be uncomfortable with that and there's a certain degree to which people are not uncomfortable with the fact that we are so willing to relinquish so many of our um, rights at work because we are so fearful of our bosses and I want us to not be that way and I have a book recommendation about that too so oh yeah that's okay. coming up because <laughs> we we've almost reached our time like geez <laughs> that went by really fast but my final thought on it is very flies when you're <laughs> you said. I think it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, where this goes in the upcoming week. Who's going to replace Whoopi if she leaves? If she's going to quit at all? Quit, um, Whoopi. Quit. Yeah, I probably wouldn't mind. But then the view would definitely be, you know, destroyed if she left, I think. Oh, yeah. They should just cancel it if she leaves, which I would have no problem seeing. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts on this? or where you think it's gonna go? Stupid, that's what it is. And I will be, if you're watching, you're probably not, but if you are, quit. <laughs> so what is the book recommendation for people? Yes, so the book that everyone needs to read is very much in line with our discussion today is this book called Private, oh, I can never get it to, there we go, Private there Government. Private Government by Elizabeth Anderson. And the subtitle of the book is How Employers Rule Our Lives and Why We Don't Talk About It. Um, and so ultimately, she makes this case that, you know, we talk about freedom and everything else, but we're, as soon as we punch into that job, we're so okay with essentially giving away all of these freedoms. And think about it, we spend more of our time at work than we do anything else. So we're okay shutting up and we're okay with giving up all of these rights at work. Um, and essentially being okay with being under this tyrannical environment, but we shouldn't be okay with that. And so if we want to push back, we should really be on Whoopi's side because what they are doing to her is tyrannical. And so I would recommend that people um, read Private Government. It's changed my thought about work and just um, that type of submission, which I think people should, you know, push against. And so check it out. Great. Well, let them know where they can follow you to ask you any questions or, you know, argue. 
<laughs> well, I'm not argue, but you can tweet me or Instagram me at JC Tiger Fan. That's J A Y C Tiger Fan. Yeah, well, thank you for this enlightening conversation on this very interesting topic that's been going on for the past two days. Just, uh, I feel like by next week we'll be talking about something else. That's how these things work. So, and we'll be be home or hopefully quit. She will have quit by then. So, right. <laughs> well, y'all, we will see y'all uh, later in the week again, two episodes a month. And I'm pretty sure something else is going to happen to where we can discuss it. So, yeah, uh, we will see y'all for the next episode. Bye.